ahead and get started for today. Um, my name is Becky Sanders. I'm the program director for the Upper Midwest Telehealth Resource Center. Thank you for joining us today. Everyone has been added in listen only mode for today's call. And um, you can use the chat function to ask uh, technology related questions, but then please use the Q&A function to ask questions. That way, if there's questions we can't get to, then we will um, address those later in an email. Um, everything will be recorded today and it will be posted on the UMTRC website. Um, Autumn, who is also on this call facilitating the technology for us today, I will be sending out an email to everyone registered that with the link when the, both the slides and the recording are posted on our website. All right, so today's topic is virtual office hours, and we're going to be talking about vid video etiquette today. So when, so we've been a telehealth resource center for eight years almost 10 years. Um, and typically when we started talking about a telemedicine room design, we're talking about where the patient is located during a telemedicine visit. And typically that would be a clinical office, maybe in a primary care center, or it might be in the emergency room, um, those types of things. Um, so we would talk about the telemedicine room design where the patient was gonna be as a clinician office. So you would have the normal uh, cadre of things to take vital signs. There would be um, some type of a medical assistant or um, nurse practitioner or somebody there with the patient um, that was taking the vitals and then the, the provider would be at a distant facility. Um, now with coronavirus, with COVID-19, what we're typically seeing is the patients are social distancing, they're staying home if they're healthy and just need to be seen for um, checkups or for minor things. Um, and oftentimes the, pro um, the providers are actually also at home um, seeing patients from their home offices. So these are the things that we're really gonna talk about today is how do you, does a patient or a provider ensure privacy um, in their own home or whatever setting that they're in? Um, what, does it, what do we mean by website manner? Um, when we talk about video etiquette, what do we mean? Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about consent forms and vital signs. Um, there has been a huge flurry of information that has come through um, regarding changes to policy, both at the federal level and at the state level. We're not really gonna go over those today. Um, if you go to our website and look under, um, oh, Autumn, remind me, because we just, we're moving those things around. Is it, is it under events now? Yes. Okay, so under events and then archived webinars, um, she's keeping um, the whole list in a backwards chronolo chrono chronological uh, format of all of the different recordings. The slides are all there, so that information is archived for you. So these are the things you don't wanna do. Okay, so I've made a little fun of myself. Um, you can see my messy office back here. That's not professional, um, wearing, t-shirts and stuff that say things on them is not professional. Um, you see some examples of, you know, I'm, so I'm down here taking notes, but if you as the practitioner are not telling your patient, hey, okay, hang on just a second, I'm gonna make some notes, and then you did da 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 then they think you're not listening or, you know, distracted, whatever. And these last two here, lighting, um, I do have a window here beside me. I have closed those blinds. I do not have my overhead light on. Um, it's pretty sunny today. I've got a daylight lamp up there that I normally use, um, but I didn't really need it today because it's so sunny outside. Um, so those are the things you don't want to do. Let's go back and, um, well, no, sorry. So what you really want to make sure that you have is a clean and uncluttered view between your webcam, which is right here for me, and you. Um, my I'm trying to focus on the little camera in my webcam there and so that for you on the other side it looks like I am having direct eye contact with you. So that's a little trick. It takes a while to train yourself to do that. 
Um, depending on the platform that you're using, you may be able to have a self view. You may be able to turn that on and kind of look at yourself, um, or you may not. So just different tips and tricks for each platform you'll have to learn. Uh, for lighting, I actually, I just talked about lighting. Um, so you don't want to have um, light behind you because it creates a halo effect and a lot of times um, overhead lights um, can create a, a halo effect. You don't want to have a plant sticking out of your head or uh, a really messy background. It just is not professional. It detracts from what you're trying to do and the connection you're trying to make between the patient and the provider. Um, I do have my pretty background back here. Um, that's one way you can minimize uh, distractions in your background. Um, this is a physical banner that we purchased for photo shoots for conferences. And it's about eight foot wide and about 10 foot tall. So it barely fits in my home office. <laughs> Acoustics. Um, so here in my home office, I have carpeting. Uh, paint on the walls. Um, it's a regular um, drywall ceiling. It's not acoustic tiles, but in a clinical setting, you've got a lot more um, opportunity. Um, you could have, um, I suppose if in here, if I wanted to, I could put panels on the wall that absorb sound. Um, in a clinical space, you might just have tile floor, so it might be a little bit echoey. So you want to make sure what kind of, that you have a good microphone and speakers, those types of things for good audio signal. Um, here and right now in my, my neighborhood, there is very little traffic, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, if you're in a clinical setting, you might not want to put your telehealth room right by a busy elevator or a busy stairwell. Um, where there's going to be a lot of foot traffic or right by the HVAC unit or something like that. Um, try and minimize outside, outside noises. Wall colors. Um, light walls can um, accent most skin tones. So the two colors that we recommend are light blues or light grays. And here's some additional resources. I am gonna go back and spend a little bit more time because um, I ran through these really quick on some of those other things. Um, but some additional resources for you when you talk about video etiquette and, and all the, well, all the stuff that's going on uh, right now with COVID, we do have a specific resource page on our website for COVID-19. We have en enhanced our telehealth FAQs. So you can see those, um, what I mentioned the webinar recordings, we've got several um, toolkits. There's the National Telehealth Resource Center that is specifically focused on technology. Um, other resources, you can sign up for our monthly newsletters, um, contact information for myself, for Luke Wortley, who answers the majority of our technical assistance and for Autumn Daniels can be found here. So I'll come back to this slide when we get ready to do questions. Um, and let's go back and just talk a little bit more about some of these things. So I kind of mentioned them all. Um, let's start with vital signs. So if you are a practitioner that normally has someone take vital signs for you, how do you take vital signs when you're on a video call with a patient and there's no one with the patient to take their vitals? Well, you're gonna to have to rely on that patient. Uh, most households do have um, a thermometer. They might have a blood pressure cuff. If there are healthcare providers in the family, they might have and know how to use a stethoscope. They might, you know, might be able to have somebody with the patient. Um, there's a lot of consumer devices these days. If, the, the, uh, if your patient has um, some type of a health monitoring app, maybe they're monitoring their blood sugar or their pulse rate, their weight, all of these types of things, um, and they can tell you that. Uh, we do recommend that you put um, in the notes for the, the patient visit uh, that their patient provided vitals. Um, but there's a lot of options. There's um, a whole plethora of technology available for patients to take their own vitals these days. Um, consent forms. Uh, we did uh, virtual office hours last week about consent forms and documentation, so I would encourage you to take a look at that. 
Um, you do want to get consent. We do have sample consent forms on our website. Um, I think what else um, in that particular um, virtual office hours we did last week, we looked at each state in our region. So Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. And we looked at the laws and regulations for consent in each state. So that would be really helpful if you have questions on that. Um, website manner, I've talked about that a little bit already. Um, you know, we've done a lot of trainings recently. We did some for um, diabetes self-management and those diabetes educators um, in a in-person setting working with a patient might have plastic food um, so they're not necessarily going to give each patient plastic food to take home with them they might give them a plate or they might say you know only one third or one quarter of your plate should be carbs um, but you can do things like um, Talk about a deck of cards or, you know, your thumb is a tablespoon, um, your uh, hand, the palm of your hand is about four ounces uh, for a size, a serving of protein for meat or a deck of cards or, you know, whatever it might be. You're just going to have to be a little bit creative um, in these unprecedented times. If you're a behavioral th health therapist or you're delivering advice that could be emotionally disturbing to patients, you might ask them if they have a tissue nearby. You're not gonna be able to pass them a box of tissues. Um, kind of website manner and privacy. Um, you need to think about your space as a clinician, what's around you. Um, you do you have the door locked in the room that you're in? Can people come in and interrupt? Um, you know, and, and for the patient, um, you might say, hey, is there anybody else in the room? Because you don't know what's outside of the small webcam video that you're seeing. You don't know what's going on over here or outside or downstairs unless I tell you. Um, you know, if, I, if I'm the patient and I don't mention that I've got somebody sitting here and all of a sudden they start talking, um, that could be a little disconcerting. So that's the basics. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for questions and we'll see where our um, discussion takes us. So go ahead and use the Q&A function and ask questions. Um, Autumn has put up in the um, chat function the location to go and find all of our recordings and webinars um, that we've done previously. And go ahead and take us back to our last slide here with our contact information. Whoops. And I will caution you, um, we've, we're getting a lot of phone calls these days, so honestly, the best way to get a hold of us is um, via email. Also, since we're re working remotely. Any questions? Do you use a web camera separate from your laptop camera? Um, I think it just depends. Um, the webcam that I'm, I'm using uh, a desktop computer and I have two monitors. I've got the Q&A going over here and then I've got my monitor and my webcam sits on top of my monitor. It's not built in. Um, I happen to like Logitech products. I'm not saying that they're the best or anything like that, but that's what I like. Um, I can't remember what model I have. Um, I think what, you know, I've had some, some issues before with speakers on laptops and microphones. Um, so if, if you can, um, I would recommend an external speaker and microphone. And then just kind of depends. Um, I mean, you could use a, a webcam off of a, um, a laptop or you could use a webcam off of a tablet of some sort just going to depend on the quality of the video and your your broadband too it'll depend on the broadband that you have available to you the toolkits um, the technology toolkits that is the um, reference on this particular slide 
includes a video about choosing a video conferencing platform and some examples of what kind of platforms are out there. Right now with the um, relaxation of HIPAA rules, you don't have to use a HIPAA compliant video conferencing platform. There's a ton of them out there. Um, they all have their pros and cons. Um, what else do I want to say about toolkits and video conferencing products? The UMTRC does recommend that you still do choose a HIPAA compliant uh, video conferencing product for telehealth or telemedicine um, because we really think that you're going to like it and like having that option for your patients. I think your patients are going to like it. Um, so we don't want you to get stuck with something that's not HIPAA compliant because eventually we do expect those those rules to um, come back into place and we don't want you to be um, caught unaware. Oh, you're right. There is an extra digit in, in Autumn's. Um, I will fix the slide before we post it. Thank you. Her area code is 812. Um, i trying to think. We have tons of other resources on our website as well. Um, we're putting together, we spent the month of April doing a, a ton of recordings and webinars, and we'll be putting together a lot more toolkits during the month of May. Any other questions? All right, well, we've got about 10 minutes um, before um, the end of this. We've scheduled a half an hour for our virtual office hours. So we'll kind of hang out for the next 10 minutes and see if there's any other questions that come in. Mm, biggest challenge or barrier with telehealth? That is a really good question. Um, and I'm going to say it depends. It depends on what type of provider you are. Um, if you are a provider that um, physical therapist, you're going to have a really hard time not being able to touch a patient. Um, I know physical therapists, by, by, by Medicare rules, physical therapists can't provide services via telehealth, but the services could be provided by an authorized provider. Um, the states in our region, for the most part, have allowed physical therapists to be able to deliver services via telehealth. So mostly what they're doing is talking to their patients, um, you know, have kind of walking them through different stretching exercises or posting videos with them or for them, I should say. If you are, um, other barriers could be, well, so 10 years ago, I would say the barriers were the equipment. Um, the technology just hadn't um, been so proven enough that it was not, um, it was pretty expensive. But the technology has um, gotten a lot better, a lot smaller, a lot cheaper. Um, other barriers, other barriers could be language barriers, and there are um, translation services available via telehealth. Uh, but other barriers could be process. Uh, you know, really, when you do a service or you provide a health care service or a clinical service via telehealth. It's the same service that you're providing. You're just providing it in a different modality. Um, all the things with social distancing right now and best practices have kind of thrown us into this world where uh, most of us are, are trying to stay home as much as possible. Um, a barrier for the patient could be broadband access. Maybe the patient doesn't have adequate broadband. So you might have to work around those, um, those problems. Any other questions? All right. Um, Autumn, can you go ahead and share the survey for today? Um, our program is federally funded, and we do ask that you fill out the survey. It's just a real quick three question survey. Uh, we always um, strive to improve upon um, the services that we provide and to um, fill the gap for if there's any gaps. Language. Can we get around that with a family member? Oh, absolutely, yes. 
So if you have a, uh, one family member who has a language barrier and there's someone else in the family that can translate for them, absolutely, yes. You can do that. Adam has posted the survey monkey link. Um, again, that's just a short three questions that helps us to improve our services that we provide. Thank you. All right, well, thank you for participating in today's uh, virtual office hours. I hope this was helpful. And be sure to follow up with an email if you have any additional questions. Thank you.